Universe, back at you here, Demon Seed on the YouTube Network. How are all you flabby ass schmucks out there? Hey, Mike and I, the Phantom Maniac, we're heading down to Las Vegas again. This time we're going to the NAB Expo. Uh, I, I think that stands for uh, National Association of Broadcasters or something like that. But they're gonna have an entire pavilion that's just drones. So we're gonna go check that out. We're gonna interview um, DJI and 3D Robotics and Walkera, and we're gonna get some close-up good shots of that new Phantom 3 that's out. So we're gonna see how high up the chain of command we can actually get to him and interview him with the hard questions. So if you've got any questions that you want answered from DJI or 3DR, leave it in the comment down below and I'll shoot those questions out to him, I promise you. All right, you ready to do this, Mike? Yeah, I was born ready. <laughs> He's always ready. All right, the Phantom Maniac and I, we're hitting the road. Yeehaw! <laughs> hey guys, we're in Nevada and uh, just crossed the state line and we're still heading down the freeway. We're gonna take Highway 95 for about seven hours to get to Boulder City where we're gonna stay. So uh, anyway, how do you like my lizard? Check it out, guys. We're at the fireworks store. We I got some some uh, sparklers, special effects sparklers, and um, we're gonna strap them to the Phantom and do some sky painting with them, or we're gonna give it a go anyway. Yes, sir. These are some serious artillery right here. There's 18 different breaks in here. Like this one's gonna explode three times once it gets up in the air. This one probably, you know, twice or three times. And then there might be like a quad one too, which is four of them. Talk about a kid in a candy store. There's all kinds of explosives here. We just have to make sure we blow it all up before we get back into California. The redneck finale. The midnight toker. What's that? Firecrackers. You think we can strap them to the drone? We'll try it. When in doubt, try it out. There's a Phantom Maniac for fireworks. Can we get it up there, Mike? See all those fireworks right there? That's how many fireworks I got. Now look how many Mike got. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I've got a bedtime story for you. After telling the last story, the uh, tornado tale, I've had several requests for another story. So snuggle up with the missus and whoa. And uh, I'm gonna tell you a new story. A as long as that, that was a cop. yeah, and he's fucking coming after us. All right, well, we just got pulled over for doing 87 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone. And I just met the nicest cop I've ever met. I've never been able to talk my way out of a ticket before. You know, I just don't have the body for it. So anyway, I said, what are my chances of getting a break? And he said, pretty good. So we got out of it, he let us go. So I'm doing 60 now in a 70 mile an hour zone. So I got a bedtime story for you. When I was about 15 years old, I lived on McClellan Air Force Base in North Highlands, California, right outside of Sacramento. And of course we were all invincible. We were 15 year old boys and nothing could hurt us. We were, we were kings. 
So we were always getting into mischief, me and my buddy down the street, Julius Harris. So we decided that we wanted to do something that was just going to be beyond belief, right? So 4th of July came along, and back then in the 60s, you could buy some pretty cool fireworks in, the, in California still. So we took all the money that we made mowing lawns, and we bought as much fireworks as we possibly could get. But instead of lighting off the fireworks, we opened them all up, and we got the gunpowder out of them. And then we took a toilet paper roll, an empty tube, a little cardboard tube that's in the middle of toilet paper, and we taped off one end of it, and then we filled it with gunpowder. Filled that toilet paper roll completely full. We took a pencil and mashed it down. <laughs> gunpowder, mashing it down <laughs> until this thing was tight with gunpowder. Then we taped off the top end. Then we took a pencil and shoved the pencil into the side of it. Now leaving that pencil stuck in the side of it, we stole all of our dad's electrical tape and we start wrapping it. And wrapping it and wrapping it and wrapping it until finally we've got a bowling ball. I mean it's as big as a bowling ball, big round ball. So we grab a hold of the pencil and pull the pencil out and we make our fuse and we thread our fuse down that hole into the toilet paper roll. Now the only place that we could think of that was going to be big enough to blow up our bomb was the neighborhood playground. So we decided, well, we'll go over to the neighborhood playground and we'll do it there. So in the playground, they had a giant sandbox. It was about 25 feet square. It was huge. You could put 40 kids in that sandbox. So on the edges of the sandbox were these 2 by 12 pieces of lumber that would keep all the sand in, right? So the whole thing was encased in this lumber around the edges. So we got right in the middle of the of the uh, sandbox and we start digging a hole. We dig a hole about three feet deep until we finally hit earth and dirt. So we dig a little bit more. And we take this bomb and we sprinkle a whole bunch of gunpowder down into the hole and we make a trail of gunpowder. Oh, and by the way, I, I forgot to tell you, I used to babysit this lieutenant's kid down the street from us and he used to load his own shotgun shells in his garage. Well, I found his black powder in these cans, these big cans of black powder. So I snitched a couple of cans of black powder from the guy I used to babysit for. So using that black powder, we made a trail coming out of the sandbox and all the way across the playground, a little mound of gunpowder. And there was a little berm, a little grass hill berm. And we get behind this little hill and we take our lighter and we light it and we light the gunpowder on red that's right in front of us and the gunpowder goes poof and just burned the shit out of my face i had black dots that looked like i had blackheads from acne all over my face and this gunpowder goes racing across the playground goes down into the into the sandbox and kablam this thing goes off well, when it blew up, it not only emptied the sandbox of all of the sand, it dug a hole about four feet deep into the earth. And all of the wood that was around that sandbox was toothpicks. Completely shattered everything. All it was was a gigantic crater in the earth. And the mushroom cloud, you've seen a nuclear bomb when a nuclear bomb goes off and it makes that giant mushroom cloud up in the air. This bomb did exactly the same thing. It made a gigantic mushroom cloud going up into the air, probably 250, 300 feet in the air. So me and Julius, we look at each other and we're like, oh my God. And we turn and hightail it for the back fence. And the, over the back fence of the playground is this giant field that we knew we could hide in. So we jump the fence and we go out into the field and we hide. Next thing you know, there's sirens and, and police cars and, and plain clothes officers and the base commander and the head of the OSI, which is the Office of Special Investigation, the Air Force's version of the FBI. Everybody was there. 
and they were all standing around this sandbox, what was left of it, looking into this hole and wondering what the fuck would have caused that hole in the earth. Nobody could figure it out. So the OSI got on the case and they found out it was gunpowder and it was a bomb and all that. So it made all the papers on base, all the, the stars and stripes and all that, they all ran a story on some hoodlums blew up the sandbox and they wanted information as to who did it and all that. I don't there, there could have even been a reward, I don't know. But uh, no one ever found out that Julius and I blew up the sandbox and uh, we got away with it and uh, we were young and we were invincible. So I'll wrap it up with this little passage that I wrote. And the passage goes like this. When we grow old, we are respected for our wisdom, though I prefer my youth and stupidity. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. You guys have hey guys, we're here in Tonopah, Nevada. And we're gonna wrap it up and crash here for the night then do the rest of the trip to Vegas tomorrow morning. We managed to get ourselves out of about a $400 speeding ticket for doing almost 90 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone. But uh, hey, I was in the middle of telling a story and my foot got a little bit heavy on the gas. Hey, I wanna introduce you. That is Jeannie Brush. And Jeannie was my friend that went to Burning Man with me every year for 16 straight years and Jeannie just passed away last week. So say a prayer for Jeannie for me. All right, you guys, Demon Seed on the road to Vegas. Don't forget to kiss the wife for me, and like I always say, make it a wet one. Demon Seed, out!